Hello, friends. Welcome to Mind Power Kinesis. Today, I would like to talk about thoughts, thought forms, states of our mind, and how to make protection from a negative thought form, and what we need energy for. So if you remember, I mentioned that we need to keep chakras in order to embody our visualization. We need to keep a free flow throughout our chakras. And to develop a certain Siddhi superpower connection. The main problem is with others that they dream. And they dream is fantasy. They want something but do not know how to embody their thought form in life. So that is something we will talk about today. So, what is a thought? And why many people think wrong? First off, as you might have heard in the last few lectures, our thought is a linear wave. A thought goes directly from you to an object or who you are thinking about. For instance, we want something and we used to think that just thinking about it we can make it come true. But this is a mistake because we don't know all factors. We're not sure or we don't know how our thoughts will bounce off. Just like playing pool, billiard, snooker. When you hit the cue ball, It flies off the board, bounces, and you can roughly calculate the trajectory of the ball as it will roll. But if we imagine this ball in multi-dimensional space, we won't be able to predict its trajectory. And this is where the main problems occur. When we think of something, we think in a linear wave from here to there. In order for your thought to quickly run into life or create life, you need to understand such a thing as mental vacuum, mind vacuum. And without it, you cannot do anything. Why I stress on mind vacuum? Because it's like warming up your muscles before training. Warm up does not give you any strength, but it does save you from injury and any muscle rupture when lifting large weights or performing some complex exercises. So one must keep mental vacuum in mind, have a habit. Only then you'll be successful in life. Your mind will be clear to execute any thought, anything that you desire. And it takes a lot more. So practice this on a daily basis. And today's lecture is very important. If you, if you are able to understand it, you'll basically understand 85 to 90 percent of all our connections, abilities or superpowers. So 
So back to linear waves. Linear waves of our thoughts go from us to some object, from us to a different position, from us to a different person, from point A to point B. We don't think in all directions, but a spherical wave works like an explosion. So if we could imagine, we could see a linear wave looking like a sine wave in mathematical terms. And if we see a spherical wave, what is a spherical wave? It's expanding from the center of a sphere and goes further and further and further and further. At a certain time, it touches all points in space. In the beginning, to start, it touches to a point that are closer to the center and spread further and farther. Just like if you throw a pebble in a lake, you will see the center point and see how the waves ripple. How to create such a wave? The fact that is everything was created by images without words. Our universe is created on basis of images. When we think with our thoughts, when we talk in our head, when we want something, we use linear waves. That's when we think with our thoughts. But images, images emit spherical waves. When communicating with people, you always use linear waves. But if you want to communicate with the universe, you should use spherical waves. If we take a reference of a movie, I already told you about The Secret in lecture one. They say that you just want something, but they don't tell you how you should want. I wonder why they don't tell you how in that movie. I wonder if they will tell, maybe many people will be able to achieve great heights. Of course, not everything is possible. Not everyone thought runs on implementation. So how we create a spherical wave? How do we communicate with the universe? The first factor, which is important, is to correct work of our chakras. Friends, why I always come back to chakras? Because it is our energy. It's like an air. If you don't have good air in the gym or a bottle of water, you will be very hard to train. You will struggle. Same here. Without a correct work of chakras, your thoughts will remain at the level of fantasy. I am often asked by my students why there is a lot of allegorical information about chakras in the Bible, in the Quran, or religious texts. As far as I can tell or observe, it's because the Bible was written by people who knew about the chakras at that time, but they live or they try to live in accordance with the law of the universe 
and try to present them in an accessible way. So with the help of the Bible, it's easy to lead people. A few of some authors that came down in the future of this great book created it not out of selfish motives. They wanted to bring good to the people. So much of what the Bible says is consonant with the way the chakras are arranged. So if you thoughtfully compare the information, you will find similar moments. You will find lots of similarities within these religious texts. So continuing. The second factor is the creation of a certain image. How is it done? Here you must, at this point, you must clearly understand yourself. What is mental vacuum? What is mind vacuum? what it is. I'll explain again. We have several states of our brain and these states depend on the oscillations of neurons per second. That is, which means how many times neurons are transmitted between synapses. In my opinion, I think everybody knows it. But not everyone knows what an oscillation frequency is. This is how many times those impulses are transmitted through the channels of our brain. When we are in mind, mind vacuum, we enter the so-called alpha state. This state, of course, is 8 to 15 oscillations per second. And in this state, it is calm, relaxed state of the brain. It is a state of meditation. And in this state, when we enter, we can repair our subtle bodies very well. So in alpha state, we can repair our subtle bodies very well. Psychokinesis is one thing. But to repair yourself, this is almost close to immortality. How well you repair your body, how quickly can you repair your body? Alpha state is one of the states where you can relax, program yourself, repair your body. It is very important for staying in this state to learn and learn how to breathe properly. That is, take a deep breath, hold the breath for a little bit, then a smooth exhale and repeat. The next state we live in all the time is called beta state. This is from 15 to 25 oscillations per second. There's also a state over beta, higher beta, which is 30 to 45 oscillations per second, and then a super beta, 50 to 120 oscillations. This is the state when geniuses Thoughts suddenly lit up, a state of excitement. It also could be a state of excitement, fear, irritation, and anger. People who are in businesses such as security patrol, police, army, anything that people protect, 
they often get into such situations when they need to make decisions very quickly. This is where they activate the state of super beta, where your attention is fully focused on only one object. But here, our task is not to try to become super, Superman by accelerating our thoughts, rather to get into a state of alpha. And that's what we're trying to achieve. So this state is like sleep, easy, relaxed. There are also lower vibrations in the brain state, which is theta and delta. Theta is four to eight hertz. This is also called the twilight state, the trance state. When you meditate and fall into a trance, you enter to a theta state, but here you need to be very careful because in this state, your consciousness is almost disconnected and you become very exposed to any impact, which is the entrance to your subconscious is very simple. Logic is completely disabled. If someone tell you in this state that you are a giraffe, you will be a lifetime thinking that you are a giraffe. Even in this state, it is also quite easy to treat a person. It helps in healing. It helps in removing certain blocks and fears from him. But to enter the state of theta for self-treatment can be very dangerous. And only very advanced yogis know delta state. It takes lots of discipline, lots of practice. Anyone can achieve it. Just take discipline and practice. Choose your journey wisely, because this condition borders on clinical death, less than 4 hertz. In this state, you couldn't even get out. In other words, you could be vegetable, if you're not taking precautions, proper way to develop this. But then again, it's all theory. Nowadays, there's a lot of scientific research on these states. And they're bringing more meditation and other ways to help others. Now, back to the practice. We have to learn to enter alpha states. And to do this, you can take a comfortable position. Find a good place. This is where you're going to enter a state of like meditation. It's not always necessary to fold your legs into a lotus position. You don't always have to resemble as a Tibetan monk. If you're over 45, 50, and your body is not quite flexible, it is uncomfortable to sit in a lotus position, then just take a comfortable position. Point is, try to completely be comfortable and disable all your thoughts and images. Because if you don't, it would be the same as not trying or not tying your shoelaces before running. So learn how to enter alpha state correctly. I don't recommend you to descend to a lower vibration, such as theta state. Because if you fall asleep during this meditation, it defeats the purpose. Once you start to feel like you're falling asleep during this meditation, try to get out of this state. The state of theta and delta are not for you yet, especially if you haven't mastered it. But then again, if you were mastering, or you were masters in this state, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. At this moment, I have not enter a delta state in quite a while because I know that I don't need it. When it comes down to entering this state, I enter with the help of my mentor, my teacher. And this is the state where you can remove any fears, some children's phobia, but it's best not to enter there by yourself. Some of you might ask, why do we fall asleep while training mental vacuum, mind vacuum? 
of course it means that you're going deeper. You want to keep yourself in a light state of relaxation. When your body is relaxed, that is good. So as our mind is clear, it's easier to execute, to create certain images that we are trying to execute. And here, we are almost approaching to understanding how to form and start to implement thoughts. This next couple weeks, two weeks, I will release you from all exercises that I have been stressing you to train. I hope you guys have been training these thoughts, light exercises cube exercises, sensation exercises, because without these, these are the foundation. You will not be able to get your connection. I do see some students submit their demonstrations, experiences, which I'm very pleased of. I thank you. Others who might be shy, it's okay, I understand. So I will relieve you from all exercises that we have previously trained. And I will eventually give you an exercise to develop the ability to visualize. You can see in other groups and I'm on YouTube People will have a good connection of their sensitivity, but if you notice, majority of them are guessing. They're waving, hopefully, that it hits the target. So, sensitivity is well, but there's no improvement in visualization and intuition. We will dwell in this subject, training on this with our mentorship program students. It is important for me that you learn to visualize absolutely any object, to imagine any sensation, whether it's heat, cold, humidity, or dryness. These beginning exercises were very important exercises. Like I said, these are the foundation. If you learn to do this in conjunction with the techniques we worked out before, your thought will gain strength. So this is pumping your thoughts. If you do not know how to clear or create a clear image of desired it's like shooting a gun at sparrows, knowing that there's a bunch of birds sitting, but not sure where the pellet will end up. I know in this group, a few number of people are engaged in healing or trying to work with the subtle human bodies, the subtle human bodies but they don't know how to form and run an idea, how to fix a human field. This is actually very simple and is concluded within the next six lines that we'll tell. It might take you a long time to understand all these, but just keep practicing humbly. Today's lecture is exercise we will be working on launching a thought. So again, in short, we enter into a state of mental vacuum, mind vacuum, or alpha state. Next we form a thought at the level of the pineal gland. I spoke about this in the previous lectures as well. So we form a thought at the level of a pineal gland. So now that we understand 
that thoughts are impulses of brain, some kind of flashes. And our thought, our brain, our brain does not give birth to thought. It only processes it. Our brain does not give birth to thought. It only processes it. Now imagine the following analogy. Thought is like a channel with the internet. It's just a cord that you connect to the computer and your brain is the computer that processes the information. Usually, we think in linear waves, point A to point B. And we know that pineal gland emits spherical waves. I did a post about the pineal gland in the ancient Egyptians. If you look at the historical paintings, the pine cones forms were very common. All these were for a reason. It is all about a process of launching a thought. So, in the area of the pineal gland, you represent a dark sphere. In that dark sphere, you clearly imagine the object you want. And at this moment, you should not use any words during this process. What is also very important is to add feelings to the visualization, emotional feelings to the visualization. If you type on the internet temperature of emotions, you will see a bunch of images of a man who stands in different colors, starting with yellow. The fact is, not everyone can imagine, visualize their emotions. For example, emotions such as joy or fear. If you cannot imagine, then to do this, I recommend you to use this map of emotions. It will show you the emotions, how it lights up your body when you're feeling these joy or fear type of emotions. I always prefer unconditional love. For example, we feel with joy throughout our whole body and try to always remember your feelings in different situations. This is your task for a week. Track all your feelings. Joy, anger, envy, fear, love, hatred. Feel these, track them, which part of your, if your body illuminates. And if you find it difficult to track where, where these emotions are being born, then use a temperature map for, of emotions. Carry it on your cell phone. Take a screenshot or just print out and have it in your pocket. As you feel an emotion, you can always reference to that picture and see where that emotion was born. Because this is very important. And when you visualize a certain object, you have to charge it with an emotion. You have to cause the feeling and mentally push it into the image that you are creating. This is very important. I will repeat this. When you visualize a certain object, whatever your creation is, what you desire, you have to charge it with an emotion. You have to cause the feeling and mentally push it into the image, that emotion. And this is a very important part, how to finally run it or run your thoughts.
one of our students. She did a lightning trigger video. She knew the moment her intuition told her that she visualized and executed and lightning was created. You create a thought, create that reality, you charge it with an unconditional love emotion and send it out. Shoot that image out. Again, once you visualize a certain object, you charge it with emotion, you feel that emotion, and mentally push it into the image that you created. Up to this point, you only see the picture, but the picture exists only in your imagination. So what's happening? The universe doesn't know what you want. When a person kneels down and begins verbally praying to God, crying towards the universe, asking for help, they remain unheard because the universe doesn't know our language. All the people think in the exact same way. Images are sent everywhere the same. I can declare that mental images of other intelligent beings on other planets are also the same. Just as the same way our great grandfathers, other civilization, advanced civilization, and even as beings on other planets, mental images are the same everywhere. So we create a desire image, put an emotion in it, and then you begin to concentrate on this object. I always suggest using the following scheme because it works. I usually imagine all objects, people, and things in one photo and then I start to compress this picture into a small sphere, increasing the concentration of events in it. And then I rotate it clockwise. Because as mentioned before, when we rotate clockwise, energy is going in. And counterclockwise or anti-clockwise is going out. Here you are reinforcing the image of your photos concentrated into a small ball and it rotates when you're imagining yourself in a pitch black area. The larger this area in your mind is better, then you can concentrate the sphere with image at the level of your lead chakra and start to expand it. It runs through your body and filling the surrounding space. You can imagine it as a light or just a hollow sphere. And when you run a thought that way, it works 100%. Now that you have learned how to actually run thoughts and why just regular chatter, mental chatter, in a form of mental request and prayers does not work you must put emotion so remember the cube the ball visualization exercise it was preparatory to allowing you to create a clear image if you don't remember it you can always go back to units and look for that exercise once again, these are the foundations. If you do not practice, you're just too eager just to throw some visualization and just move the ball with your pulling and your sensitivity. You will get just so far. Properly develop yourself and you'll achieve greater. So your tasks for these days Ignore the past exercises if you are done with those. Create yourself a small situation just for fun. Just remember not to overdo at the beginning. If you try to 
immediately aim for creations of serious events and you feel all to do is just going to take a lot of your en inner energy so don't waste your energy start small maybe such as meeting a friend for example let's create a small situation such as if you live in a big city and you haven't seen one of your old friends for a long time imagine this person and feel the joy from meeting this person which is their emotion then this image of meeting this person squeeze it, spin it and emit it from yourself you add an emotion to it you add the situation the event you squeeze it in clockwise and then you shoot it out counterclockwise and that's it after all this process it is very important to feel that something really came out of you believe it just like as old phones or flip phones used to send a message and they used to put the message in an envelope and show you it was going out from your phone just like that you must feel it coming out feel the vacuum in your body just like if you were a gun from which a shell just flew you might feel a certain state of devastation sometimes some also reported like pressure devastation but it lasts just a second and that is a wonderful sign that your thought has been run and as you generate lots of energy within you through your chakras your inner energy then you can create bigger and bigger events Now, the next point you need to know that easy situations can be run frequently. They do not require lots of energy, but serious events, which include lots of people, lots of objects, you just can't run them oftenly. Eventually, you'll run out of the energy, and your energy will prioritize on keeping you alive and not prioritize on you creating events so you must always be in meditation inner vacuum mind vacuum state so you understand now images run from chakras it is better to visualize just a sphere diverging in space so you can try to create a situation like this with calling from a certain person this week try it many many times you can even every hour try to create certain situations learn from small ones if something doesn't run or doesn't work try running simpler events this lecture is very important because when we start to practice with psychokinesis telekinesis we will often use the techniques of launching thoughts this technique will be used as an auxiliary so you have to properly work it out in different situations try to count your implemented thoughts if you manage to implement at least 10 events this week it means you're a genius thank you for your attention i'll see you soon hackman was here unconditional love